Okay, a million dollars for a fish. You sent over some info about this whole million dollar fish competition. And I have to admit, at first I was like, is this for real? Yeah, it's definitely one of those things that makes you do a double take. Right. I enjoy a good fishing trip now and then, but a million bucks just takes it to a whole new level. I took a look at that million dollar fish website you sent over, and it's a pretty wild concept. What's the deal with this competition? Well, it's not your average fishing tournament, that's for sure. What's really fascinating about the Million Dollar Fish Competition is that it's not just about hooking anglers. It's also designed to reel in tourism for Australia's Northern Territory. So it's more than just a fishing competition. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so they've been running this thing since 2015. And basically what they do is they release these tagged barramundi, which for anyone who hasn't encountered one is this pretty impressive Australian fish. They can grow to be quite large into various fishing spots across the territory. And if you're lucky enough to reel in one of these tag fish, well, you could be in for a life-changing prize. Okay, hold on. Before we get to the life-changing prizes, you mentioned barramundi. What kind of fish are we talking about here? Oh, right, barramundi, yeah. <laughs> They're really iconic Australian fish. They're known for being, like I said, quite large, and they really put up a good fight. It's a really popular sport fish. And on top of all that, they're actually delicious to eat. Oh, wow. So they release these barramundi into the wild. Someone catches one with a tag and they win a million dollars. How does it actually work? Well, not every tagged fish is worth a cool million, thankfully. Otherwise, they'd go bankrupt pretty quickly. <laughs> There's actually a tiered prize structure for the competition. Like, for example, for this season, which I think kicks off October 1st, they've released 99 barramundi, each worth $10,000 if you catch them. 99 fish, each worth $10,000. Wow. So someone out there could be reeling in a small fortune right now and not even know it. That actually reminds me, I was looking at the website and they mentioned something about charities benefiting from this competition too. You're telling me it's not just about the anglers winning big bucks. The million dollar fish competition has this really cool system where a portion of every prize goes to a designated charity. Right. So let's say you reel in one of those $10,000 bear Monday. What happens then? Well, not only do you win the $10,000, but they actually donate an additional $4,000 to charity on your behalf. That's fantastic. So it's like winning twice, once for yourself and once for a good cause. Yeah, okay. A win-win for everyone involved. Speaking of winning, I was reading about this guy, Keegan, who actually won the grand prize last season. Oh, yeah. A million bucks. Keegan's story from season nine is incredible. He was actually the first person to ever reel in the million-dollar fish, and he did it right in his hometown of Catherine. Wow. Can you imagine that thrill? Mm. I'd probably faint from shock if I ever pulled in a fish worth that much. Okay, so let's just say I'm hooked. I'm ready to book a flight to the Northern Territory right now and give this a shot. Where do I even begin? I took a peek at the itineraries on their website, and let's just say I'm a little overwhelmed. Yeah, I can understand that. The Northern Territory is a vast and beautiful place. Mm -hmm. There's just so much to explore, both on and off the water. But don't worry, the Million Dollar Fish Competition has made it pretty easy to plan your adventure. They have a range of itineraries to choose from, whether you have a few days or a couple of weeks to spare. Okay, so what would you recommend for someone with, say, limited time, like me? Like, what's the greatest hits of fishing in the Northern Territory? Hmm. For a quick but unforgettable trip, you really can't go wrong with a two-day adventure in Darwin Harbor. Okay. It's got a really diverse fishery, it's easily accessible, and you have a pretty good chance of hooking into some really fantastic barramundi there. Mm -hmm. Plus, you've got those local guides we were talking about. They can really up your chances of success. Yeah, local guides are always a good idea, especially if you're new to a fishing spot or, you know, hoping to win a million dollars. So let's say, hypothetically now, I do manage to reel in one of these tagged barramundi. What happens next? Well, that's where the how to claim section on their website comes in handy. Oh, right. It really outlines the entire process so you don't miss out on your prize. So it's all about that tag, right? Yeah. You need proof. From what I remember, you need pictures of the fish, tag intact, and you have to call a specific number to report your catch. Exactly. They have really specific instructions for documenting your catch. You need a photo of the front of the fish, one with it on a fish mat or next to a ruler to show its length, and a close-up of the tag itself. Wow, talk about a high-pressure photo shoot. And here I thought getting a good Instagram shot of my dinner was stressful. They really emphasize not removing the tag, right? Absolutely. Don't remove the tag no matter how tempted you might be. You could end up losing your prize money if you do. Right. But, you know, it's more than just the prize money at stake here. 
there's a much larger story at play, one that goes beyond fishing and winning. What do you mean? Well, we've talked a lot about the excitement of the competition, the prizes, the strategies. But one thing that really struck me when I was looking into all of this is the emphasis they place on the acknowledgement of country. The acknowledgement of country. I have to admit, I kind of skimmed over that part. What's yep. that all about? Yeah, so it's a really important aspect of Australian culture, yeah. especially when we're talking about events like this that are so closely connected to the land and the water. Basically, before the competition even begins, they're acknowledging the indigenous people as the traditional custodians of the Northern Territory, and it's a way of showing respect for their deep, deep connection to the land and water. That's really cool. It adds like a whole other layer of depth to this whole thing, you know? It's not just about the thrill of the catch, but also about respecting and appreciating the history and the culture of the place where it's all taking place. Yeah. Exactly. And it really does add to the whole experience. Like, imagine this. You're out on the water. You're surrounded by this stunning natural beauty. And you're connecting with a place that holds such deep cultural significance for the people who've lived there for thousands of years. You might reel in a prize-winning fish, you might not. But either way, you're walking away with, I think, a new appreciation for the Northern Territory, for its people and for its stories. You've painted quite a picture. It sounds like the real treasure isn't just the million dollars, but the entire experience itself. You know, I think you hit the nail on the head with that one. The Million Dollar Fish Competition is a brilliant example of how something as simple and as universal as fishing can actually become this incredible gateway to cultural discovery and a deeper understanding of a place. Like they say, it's all about the journey, not the destination. So to our listeners out there, whether you're an avid angler or you're just looking for an amazing adventure with a chance to maybe win big, this just might be your sign to dive into the world of the million dollar fish competition. Who knows? You might find yourself hooked on a lot more than just fishing.